Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. For all you new viewers, uh, a big warm welcome. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Uh, I do a lot of tutorials and DIY projects on cars. Today, we are going to talk about the rear view camera in the Ford Fusion. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna go over how to replace the camera in the 2016 Ford Fusion SE. Before we get started, let's talk about the camera and what you're gonna need to replace the camera. I did a little research. Um, this camera lists retail for about $390 from the dealership. That's pretty outrageous considering the camera is probably the size of three fingers put together. Um, I did find a camera on Amazon that ranges from 50 to 80. When it comes to purchasing the camera, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are ordering the right camera for your make and model. You're gonna wanna call your local dealership, um, give them the VIN number. They should be able to give you the part number to the camera and the price. If you wanna buy it through the dealership, you know you're getting the quality part from Ford. Uh, they do usually warranty their parts. It is a good idea to buy the Ford OEM brand of the camera. You just, it just ensures quality. Um, but today I found an Amazon camera that ranges from $50 to $80. Um, I, I can't beat that. This camera is really small and I'm not gonna pay $400 for a rear view camera in a 2016 Ford Fusion. So that's what we're gonna be putting into this Ford Fusion today. Stay tuned and let's jump right into what you're gonna need to replace the camera, what tools you're gonna need specifically, and um, then we'll jump right into the tutorial on how to do it. Okay, now for the things you're gonna need to uh, get this camera out of the back lid of the trunk, um, this is a trim tool. It, it has a little U-shaped pry at the end. You can see kind of how it curves up. This tool is gonna help us get those little Christmas tree clips that liner is attached with. Um, I'll show you in the video how we're gonna use this tool. It's really important. It makes life a lot easier. Um, you can get one of these at any tool supplier, Harbor Freight, AutoZone, any of those. It, all right, next up, you're gonna want a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench because they have a, the nuts that hold down the camera housing have tension the, all the way out. So it makes life a lot easier that's ratchet. You just stay on the nut, getting it completely off the threads. If you don't have your hand, if you can't get a hold of a ratchet style 10 millimeter wrench like this, uh, a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet wrench, will work it makes it a little harder you're going to want a small quarter inch if, as pop small quarter inch if possible um, there's not a lot of space in between where the bolts are that hold the housing down to the trunk lid and here we have the camera itself um, you can see how small it is it sits right in the palm of my hand it sits inside of the housing and kind of just the, just the tip of it sticks out of the back of the housing a lot of the problems that we're seeing the terminals right here are getting corroded some kind of maybe water intrusion or something it's always a good idea to get yourself some uh, dielectric grease this is the stuff I use you can see dielectric lubricant um, this just helps keep all the moisture and the terminals nice and clean all right let's get started first you're gonna want to pop this trunk uh, I believe there's a button right here once you get the trunk lid open, you're gonna try to take a look, just kind of go around. Look at this is the liner that we're gonna need to pull back. Um, it's held on by uh, several of these black uh, push clips, and that's what we're gonna use our trim tool to get those released. Uh, I believe there's one here, there's one right here, uh, there's one in the middle, another one. So it looks like there's about five of those that we're gonna need to remove with that trim tool. It won't be necessary to take off the handle or any of this stuff. We'll just kind of let this, this liner hang down and it'll give us just enough access to get our hand inside this trunk lid to get to the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this trim piece down. And it goes about the length, it goes to the light to light. Both lights will need to be removed first. So let's get started. So this is where this trim tool comes in handy. You want to get underneath it and you kind of want to just pry it back. You want to make, and they kind of just pop right out. And I'll show you again. You kind of just get this pry tool and you put it right underneath and that one came out real nice and easy. Do it again here. 
The ones that are recessed are just a little bit harder. Those come out really nice. So for these recessed ones, um, you can either try to get underneath it like this. I find it a little difficult, I went. I go right in between the liner and you gotta kind of find it. And there you go, you kind of pry that down. This liner kind of just is wrapped around the arms. And this will give us access to these small little holes that house the 10 millimeter bolts holding down the camera housing. Okay, once we get this liner pulled back, you can see there's one clip, those hidden clips kind of just pull out. Get this liner pulled down enough, you don't need it. It doesn't need to be a lot. So that's all about all I take it down. And this allows me to get my hand right here and there's a hole in the lid and you can get to where the housing is bolted down. Right there. There's one, there's one in the first hole and then there's one in the second hole. If you can see my hand, so there's there's a 10 millimeter here and I'll try to get the camera up in there and show you, but there's one here in the first hole and one in the second hole. And it's the same on the other side as well. Now let's see if I can slide the camera in and show you the 10 mil. So I believe it's right there, right where my finger is. Stud. I don't know. Oh, yep, right there. So. Okay, before you get to those 10 millimeter nuts holding on the camera housing, you're gonna want to take out each brake light housing, uh, reverse light housing. I think there's maybe a bulb. Some models have an LED there. Um, these are there's three 11 millimeter like plastic kind of screws they look like nuts but they're actually a plastic that goes over a, a screw there's three of them one two and three uh, just be careful if you're using an impact um, i'll may use a socket and a ratchet just to loosen them up and see if they come out you can see they're just little screw plastic with a let's see if we can get it to zoom they just have like plastic housing over this one. Be gentle, they do break. So this one, um, it just spun. What it did is it released, it unscrewed the screw that's actually in the housing. And that's what I meant, you wanted to be careful. So it just unscrewed instead of staying in like that. Um, it, it still works, it still goes back together. Just be careful. Um, and then you're just gonna wanna set that housing to the side. This is underneath the brake light, so that's why it has to be removed so that this whole housing will pull off. All right, now that we got both of the light housings out, we can start working on the camera housing. Now you can see it has a little, it has a separate housing, but it is attached to this trim piece across the, the lid. Um, this is removable, but I believe it's stuck on and you have to peel the emblem off and then there's screws. I'm not gonna mess with the emblem. Uh, I don't want it breaking. Uh, the clips that hold it on are fragile. So this is tucked under here a little bit. Once you get those 10 millimeters um, loose and off the trunk lid, uh, I'll show you how it just popped. Okay, you can see right here, my hand is in here like so. And the first one is right here and you just kinda gotta ratchet it off. Just work the nut off. Okay, this, the middle one to the left, um, you can see you kinda gotta reach way in there. And same thing, you gotta ratchet all the way off the stud. These ones are on a longer stud and that's what the ratchet wrench comes in handy. Now that the nuts are off, the first thing you wanna do, you can see that there is a clip holding this bezel on. So what I like to do is kinda of just pull it out of its slot instead of trying to force the actual clip out. There's one on both sides. So I just do that. This one already kinda, of, so you can see it, it gets pretty weak from pulling on it. So you wanna just make sure that you pull those out gently. 
There is two more clips on the inside that hold it on. Um, they're quite difficult to release, but they should just pop on their own. You just kind of have to give this a little force. Like I said, you gotta kind of give this force. You wanna pull downward, releasing those clips. With this one, see? Release that clip, you wanna get your fingers and pull it. It's All right, there we go. You can see that clip stayed. Um, you know, it is part of the, part of the process but uh, nothing broke. It is quite firm on there. It's one, two, three, four clip, white clips that hold it on. And okay, now you can see we got that camera housing slash trim, trunk trim bezel that holds your uh, license plate lights and the camera. It also houses the button for the trunk lid. All right, if you can get zoom in here, this is the camera. You're gonna need a 20 millimeter Torx uh, or star bit, and it holds the camera down. So you'll wanna take that Torx out, and it releases this little lever slash cover for the camera, and the cover camera will just slide right out. All right, so we got that cover. Uh, the camera now just slides out. There you go. Next thing you're gonna do is there's a little, you just push down this clip and it releases. See how it kind of comes up. You don't wanna break that off. And then you just pull it off the connector. All right, let's get this camera disconnected. You can see I already put some dielectric grease in this one hoping it would fix it, um, but it didn't. Sadly, this thing still doesn't come on. It just gives an error message on the camera. Um, here we go, let's put the new one in and see how it works. Like I mentioned before, you wanna grab a little dielectric grease and just kind of just kind of rub it right here on the terminal entrances. Um, this just helps corrosion and uh, keeps the terminals nice and dry. All right, just like we took it off, let's just slide that new camera in and it should just slide right into its slot. That can flip it over, see how it looks. Looks like it's nice and straight. Next thing we want to do is get this hold down cover, uh, kind of get this started, and, and get your Torx 20, your T20, and let's screw this thing back in. There we go. One more glance, make sure it looks straight. All right, looks good. All right, let's get this housing back on the car. This is the tricky part. Um, actually, we're gonna need to get this clip that stayed in the car out. You should be able to get your fingers on it and push both sides in. Um, you can also do that to uh, get the housing off. You can help these clips. You can see they got these little Christmas tree style things that hold it in the hole. So what you're gonna do is just slide it. It looks like it's facing that way. Slide it right back into where it was. All right. This is gonna be a little harder part. Make sure that all of the dowels and studs for those nuts are lining up into the hole. And then at the same time, you're gonna to wanna to put it under the emblem. So once it's under the emblem like that, you kinda of line everything up. Make sure it's all lined up. There you go. All right, what I like to do is before I put it all back together, but I got the camera plugged in and bolted down into its housing and the housing back on the trunk lid. Um, I'm gonna test the camera just to see if it flicks on real quick because before this car, the camera just wouldn't come on. So here we go. Oh yeah, look, instantly the camera pops right up. So that's awesome. We diagnosed this car right and um, it was the rear view camera. Now that we know it's working, let's uh, put the car back in the park, um, put the rest of the trunk lid back together and go test drive it. So just like it went back on, you're gonna wanna put the four um, 10 millimeter nuts back onto the four studs that are holding this housing slash trim piece down. What I like to do is get all four of them on um, just hand tight, and this just makes it a lot easier so you're not in there fumbling around with the nut and the ratchet wrench. So we get one just tight until it stops, because these do have like a self, 
uh, locks, kind of like a Loctite for the nuts so they don't come loose. All right, got those two. Let's see, just get them started. All right, once you get all four of those 10 millimeter nuts tight, we're gonna wanna put the light housings back in. And kind of, like I said before, you wanna kind of just slide it in this way. This, and then it sits back down. Kind of gotta line up. If that screw came out, you gotta line it up and get that other one started. You're, you will need two hands for this to line. Okay, once you get these 11 millimeters tight, make sure you plug the housing back in. Um, this connector powers your reverse light and if there's any other uh, driving lights in the rear housings. Okay, same with this one. Get your 11 millimeters tight that hold the housing down. There's three of them. And then just plug the connector back in. Just visually inspect everything. Make sure everything's plugged back in. Then what you're gonna do is work this liner back around where it was. It should just line right back up because we didn't take it all the way down. Same with this one, it goes around the arms. And then just get your black push Christmas tree clips and go to those five locations and you should be able to just push them right in. And there we go. Okay, once you go around, get all five of those black clips put back and you're done. Get all your tools, make sure not, you didn't leave anything in the trunk lid grooves because it could damage the car if you slam the trunk and everything looks clear. All right, let's go for a test drive. All right, let's test this camera out. Oh yes, awesome. It knows when the trunk lid is closed and it brings back the guidelines and everything. Nice smooth little backup in reverse. Awesome, let's see. Okay, once we go into back into drive, it should delay. I think there may be sometimes they're setting up, it delays until it sees speed and then it shuts off. We did it guys, another repair down. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps out the algorithm um, like a, for a small YouTube channel like mine.